what is going on guys we are back on the ftog avant 3 server now today guys we're going to be setting up endergenic generators now these are from rf tools and i've mentioned earlier in the series that these are by far my favorite form of power generation and it's actually gotten even better since the last time i set it up this will be like double the power generation uh, of the last setup that i had so it's even better than i thought we're going to be getting roughly 4096 rf per tick from each of the four that we set up so we're going to be getting a little bit over 16,000 RF per tick from this simple setup and it's going to consume an ender pearl maybe let's just say every minute it could be less than that it could be longer than that it's pretty much a 1% chance that it loses it so it's very small um, but yeah we're going to be setting it up today it's going to be going right here the space required to set it up is an 8 by 7 by 1 area uh, and that's if you're using vanilla redstone. Now, the reason I'm using vanilla redstone today is because if anyone's watching the video and wants to set it up, they might not have access to all the different things that you could use. In the past, I've used uh, vanilla redstone like we're going to do today. I've used redneck cables. Pretty much anything that can transport redstone uh, is what can be used on this. And it can make it even more compact. So it would probably be something along the lines of like five by five if you were using uh, different cables or conduits or something to move the redstone. But seven by eight by one is not very bad. So we're going to be doing that today in this pit right here. And eventually we will go and get either a spawner from a roguelike dungeon or something along those lines. And that will be what gives us our ender pearls. So there is a little bit of crafting that needs to be done. Uh, and I did set up a bunch of different recipes in here and gather some resources. So this is just inside the storage module. And the only one that I couldn't actually set up because we need seven recipes is the timer. So we're only going to need one timer. And this is pretty much a fail safe. So when we do lose an ender pearl, it'll allow another one to be fired in. But what we're pretty much going to need to do is make, starting out, make four endergenic generators. So the recipe for those requires a machine frame. So we're going to make four different machine frames right here. So we'll make four of those and then we'll go to this and we will make four of the endergenic generators so these are pretty much going to be spaced out and i'm trying to think of the exact way that i want to space these out because of how everything's going to be set up in here uh so i think we're going to want one right here and then we're going to want a two wide space and then another one and then a two wide space and a two wide space so you're going to be setting these up in a square now you can actually use less than four but four is pretty much the max that you're going to want to be firing them around and the whole idea is that you're going to be launching an ender pearl from one of these to the next and the reason you need such intricate redstone is because you set one to fire and you need the other one to pretty much open up and accept that one as close to when it's going to get there as possible and the more exact you are the better you're going to get uh, for power generation so if you open these up it pretty much has a great ui it's going to be able to store up to is at 5 million rf and it gives you the gain and law uh, the gain in rf per tick uh, on average over the last five seconds so this is going to be 4096 for us on all these or it should be uh, it'll tell you how many pearls have been lost how many have been launched and uh, the number of chances so if you're trying to figure out what's going wrong then you'd be able to look in these and kind of troubleshoot a little bit uh, so once you have these one thing that you're going to want to do is get a smart wrench to actually link these up so i don't actually have a recipe for that so we're probably gonna have to go over to the crafting bench and set it up but it's just two lapis and a piece of iron so it's really not that bad so we'll just grab out two lapis piece of iron and we can set those up so basically what we're going to be using this for is just linking them so you can go in whatever direction you want as far as i know but i'm going to be going in a clockwise direction just because it makes things a little bit easier and you can see each one is at a distance of two ticks and now if we were to click on one it'll show the destination so it just goes all the way around if you're having any issues make sure that you actually have these linked because in the past i've gone to start it up and completely forgotten to link them and it just burns through ender pearls so the next thing that we're going to be setting up is going to be ender monitors so these are going to require that we make some machine bases so we're going to need five ender monitors eventually, but we're going to make four for now. So we'll make four machine bases and then we'll make four ender monitors. And oh, we need the redstone torches. I totally forgot. OK, so we'll grab these out. We'll grab out some wood because we got to make those too. So we'll make we're going to need a fair bit of these, actually. So let's just make like 24. That should be good enough for now. Wow, someone is slamming their door. OK, so we'll get these. We'll make four of them. And there we go. So we're going to be setting these up pretty much facing in the same direction that these were going before. So it starts here, goes over here, and we're going to have it facing in that direction. So pretty much just pointing in a clockwise direction, going from where it's going to be shot out and keep going around. 
and around. Now this one is a little bit messed up so we can just rotate it. They don't always place correctly, but what you want to set these to is Pearl Fired on all of these. Now that's another thing that could be screwed up pretty easily if you just forget to switch these. So it's going to be Pearl Fired. And now we need to go back and we need to make another four machine um, machine bases. Is that what they are? Yeah, machine bases. And then we need to make four sequencers. So we have three sequencers and we are missing out on redstone torches again. So hopefully we don't run out of redstone doing this. I don't think we will, but we'll make a couple more and do that. So we need one more sequencer. So there we go. We got the sequencer there. Now these are going to go between the endergenic generators and the ender monitors. So we're going to have to rotate this one because you want it having the orange pointing to uh, the one that it's going to. So like that. And we're going to go to these and we're going to make sure all of them are set to once two. And then you're going to go in one, two, three on the first row and then click the third and the fifth one. And we're going to do that for all these. So once two and then click third and fifth. This one, once two, third and fifth. And then this one, third, fifth and once two. So that's pretty much the setup going between all of these. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is start worrying about the fail safe timer that we need and actually getting stuff set to go off of that. So there is a little bit of redstone wiring that goes around the outside. So the first thing that we need to do is make a couple more redstone torches, I believe. I always hate how it glitches out a little bit like that. Um, but what we're going to need pretty much is two more sequencers. And that means that we're going to need... Oh, we already have some wood in our inventory. But we need to make couple more sticks so we'll say 16 should be enough and craft that and throw these there so we're gonna need two more machine bases so we'll make one. Oh, we don't have what oh there we go so we'll make two machine bases and we will get two sequencers out so the sequencers for these are going to go on these blocks right over here so the reason we're setting these up over here is just because when we put the pearl injector down, it's going to go right here. So you just have to keep in mind where these are going in relation to everything else, because if you are going to orient this in a slightly different way, a different direction, then these would be on the opposite side if you have it going the other way. So we're going to put those there and then we are going to put, I guess we need to do a little bit more crafting. So we're going to get the uh, pearl injector out and that requires a machine frame, which we already have hopper, oak chest and two redstone. So we're going to craft that. And we're going to grab the pearl injector out and it's going to be going right here on this endergenic generator which is the one that's on the same side as both sequencers and this is what's going to insert your ender pearl so if you're going to put any um you know automated setup into like putting ender pearls into this that is where you'd want it to be it doesn't have a huge internal buffer but with the amount that you actually use the pearls it is pretty big so i mean you could fill this up and it would run for a very long time and get you a ton of power um, but now what we need to do now that we have that set down is set these all to ones two and do one and three. So these two on the side are both going to be one and three, set them to ones two. And the last thing that we need to do is set up the fail safe timer that I've been talking about. And that just requires one more ender monitor. So get that going right there and the timer that we made earlier. Now pull those out. So the ender monitor is going to go on this block, the one that is right next to the pearl injector. You're going to make sure that it's pointing out from there and you're going to go to pearl fired again and then you're going to set the timer down and you are going to have that again facing out same way that the ender monitor is facing and you're going to set this to 30. so the way that this basically works is if you look at the timer and you click on this open manual it pretty much says that what's special about the timer is it restarts when it uh, gets a redstone pulse and this ender monitor is going to send a redstone pulse whenever a pearl is fired from this so basically every time a pearl is able to go through this it is going to reset now if a pearl doesn't go through this and 30 uh, ticks pass which is I want to say a second and a half it's going to send a redstone pulse which is going to cause the pearl injector to put another pearl in now that's basically the whole idea behind it um, is that this is a fail safe that will jumpstart the system if it ever does lose the pearl that it's running with and the last thing that we need to do is take our redstone and just wire this all together so it does get a little bit weird because of how things need to point into each other here and connect but basically this is going to be the setup going around here and just wiring these last two in 
and it should honestly be able to run. Now, there are a couple things that I want to note. So first off, obviously, we are generating roughly, or we're going to be pulling out roughly 16,000 RF per tick. So what's important is that you understand that you need to be able to take all of that if you're going to combine it into one uh, route for the power. So obviously, if you're using the Ender IO conduits, you need an Ender, or an Ender Energy conduit because the rest of them would not be able to transport all the power and there would be a backup. So uh, eventually when I do start pulling the power out I will be using these and I am going to grab ender pearls out right now just to show you guys the whole system I think nine will be enough to fill up all of them to five million pretty easily um, but another thing to note is that when you look at these endergenic generators if you look in the bottom right hand corner of the screen you can see that it says infused zero percent if you don't know when you're working with RF tools machines a lot of them can be infused which will increase their efficiency now this requires dimensional shards which you can get uh, through a couple of different means, but a lot of it is just going to different dimensions, which is one of the big portions of RF tools. Uh, we're not going to get into that yet, but eventually you can infuse these and it will make them a lot better. Now that's insane considering how great they already are, um, but eventually I do plan on infusing them and making a bunch of these setups, which will be more compact using different uh, redstone transportation that is not vanilla stuff, whether it's uh, Ender IO. We don't have Rednet in this pack, unfortunately, uh, and that's the one I'm familiar with, but I'm sure I can just request Toddy's help and he'll be able to let me know what's going on. Uh, but we should probably throw things in here and get these working. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. If you were curious if this could be any better than it already is. So basically, we're just going to take the ender pearls and we're just going to throw them into the pearl injector and one should get kicked out when it pulses and it should stop pulsing and it has an awesome animation. Uh, so you can see how it's working. So it's just going around and around and around. And if we go to this one, it starts going up. So right now it is at 2520 RF per tick. Um, now it's at 2835. It gives you an average. So I've gotten the average all the way up to uh, 4096 RF per tick. But look at this power. We've already got 1.2 million in all of these. So this one's at 4096. These are all at 4096. So they jump around a little bit um, depending on where they are in the setup. But it's launched eight pearls uh, eight times, hasn't lost any. And it's, I just think this is such an awesome setup. It looks even better than before uh, with the new animation. I'm actually going to pull these out because chances are, I guess we can put, we'll leave three more in there because that'll probably get us to about 5 million RF in each of these. Um, but yeah, this is absurd. If you can get a, a roguelike dungeon Enderman spawner and set up just like a, a killing trap for it and directly connect it to this whole setup, uh, that is how I powered my entire base for the entire uh, unabridged series that I did a while back using this setup and it was even worse back then mine was only getting me like uh, I don't even remember how much it was getting me it was getting me around 2000 RF per tick from all of these so now we're getting almost double that at best uh, now obviously it's not always going to be that it's the average but um, like this one completely full considering it differs a little bit between these uh, for where they are in the setup but yeah uh, I think this is a great power generation setup it's really easy to set up it requires Maybe, you know, a, like a stack of iron, two stacks of redstone, half a stack of diamonds, uh, and that's really it. So I would highly suggest that you try this out if you have not already. If you have any questions, feel free to post those in the comments. I am not your number one source for this by any means, uh, and there's a very loud truck outside right now, so I apologize. One more week, guys. One more week, and I'm closing my window, and that won't be an issue. But I got to deal with my roommate not wanting it to be closed. So uh, I do apologize. I can't really edit those out of videos. But um, yeah, if you have any questions, post those in the comments. Hopefully, uh, you know, you go and check out the post that will be linked in the description and go check out uh, Toddy's videos. He's linked in the description too. Uh, he has a ton of videos on the endergenic generators, whether it's vanilla redstone, redneck cables, all that good stuff, how to make it compact everything like that. So I would highly suggest you go check those out. And uh, I think we're going to call it there for today, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. And I will talk to you guys later.